Bayern minus 120 at home, hosting PSG plus 260. The draw is plus 333. Bayern's up 1 0 on aggregate. They won in Paris, uh, minus 600 to advance. The Bavarians are PSG 4 to 1 to win the whole kit. Kabuto, Bayern's plus 350. They're the second choice after City. PSG is as high as 22 to 1. We said this, we laid this out a few weeks ago before the first leg of this encounter when PSG was dealing with a bunch of injuries. A couple of the guys didn't end up playing, but uh, we, we PSG was a mess at the time. And what did we say? If they could, we expected them to lose, they did. And if they could have kept it to 1 0, it sets up a great opportunity to come back in on, on PSG. And that's what we got here. Uh, four to one, I think is fine to advance. Plus two sixty on the the three way money line, go right ahead. Um, but I also think twenty two to one to win the whole thing is a great number. Because what what did we say before this tie? They're already playing the second best team in the tournament according to the odds, right? Like so, if they get through Bayern, that's one of the best teams in the entire tournament out. That doesn't mean that they can. They might draw a city in the next in the quarterfinal. Sure, like that's the just just the nature of of how these things work, or Real Madrid or whatever. But you're gonna see most likely Benfica get through. You'll see uh, Inter Milan and AC Milan. Like they're the the field is not gonna be that deep. It's gonna be City. It's gonna be Real Madrid. It'll be you know one of Chelsea or Dortmund. Hopefully PSG if they get through. It's gonna be open. Is the point. So if PSG do get through, I think you're gonna be wanting to hold. A 22 to 1, because what are their odds going to be if they do win this tie? What Bayern's are right now? 5 to 1, 4 to 1? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Bayern's plus 350. They're going to be like a shade higher than that. Maybe even right at it. So I think the 22 to 1 on on PSG is is a really good buy low opportunity uh, for a team that if they just have to reverse, and then this team obviously has its demons in this competition and going to Germany and beating a really good team on the road. And this competition is hard, but they're good enough to do it on paper. So if they can flip it, I lay PSG. Come on. Uh, I'll, I'll be on the 22 to 1. I like the number here. Uh, Anthony, you're with me in some respect. Yeah. Uh, if you follow me in the app, as soon as the line popped for the second leg, like the first leg ended, uh, I was getting dinner in uh, and walking into the store and I was refreshing multiple sports books, trying to figure out, you know, who's going to put up the first line. I want to hit PSG and Byron opened minus 145. I was like, holy cow, uh, that is high. Uh, grabbed PSG plus three quarters. Still like it at plus a half now that Byron's come down a little bit. I think this is, I mean, if you watch the match, the first leg, PSG played with no Mbappe and and didn't have any outlet in the first half. Like Messi and Neymar were the only two really forward players they got penned in. They couldn't break through the press. Um, Byron didn't really create anything, though. And I thought that was notable. As bad as PSG's defense has been this season, and especially in recent games, I mean, Marseille ripped them apart for 2XG. Lille over 2XG. Nantes scored twice on Saturday. Um, this defense has had major holes. It's, it's pretty concerning. But even despite that, Byron couldn't create much of anything centrally in the middle of the penalty area, which is really all I'm worried about. You know, if Byron hits a banger, you know, tip your cap. But if you're not giving up these high quality chances to iron, then I think I can live with anything else and hope Donnarumma has a good shot stopping day. So what happened in the second half? Mbappe came on and I mean, it was one way traffic for PSG. I mean, they lost one nil, but Sommer made a ridiculous save where he got lucky with his head on a one-on-one. And then PSG does score and the guy is off sides by like a yard, not even like foot, like 40 yards up the field. Uh, and, you know, it's off sides. Not that goal doesn't count, but like over and over and over again, Byron looked real bad, real shaky uh, in transition defense. And now Neymar's out, but Messi and Mbappe are going to be good to go and are fit and flying and playing well. And uh, both scored over the weekend. Both have been scoring and assisting each other for weeks now. They destroyed Marseille. They put up over two XG against Lille and Marseille and and put up four on non. Like this attack in transition against a Bayern team that's not going to have Pavard. It isn't playing Cancelo anymore. 
Cancelo played 12 minutes against Union off the bench, then did not play against Stuttgart. Uh, Nagelsmann, is he just not going to play him now? Like, okay, but that's a downgrade. Uh, and Daly Blind playing left back. I tweeted this when they lost to Gladbach. He was getting cooked over and over again in transition, like defending in space and with a high line with him is who it's dangerous. Uh, and I think, I think PSG is perfectly suited to finally get some bounces and some VAR decisions and some breaks their way in this damn league. Uh, and I think that plus a half when they don't even, you know, if it's one, one late, Bayern's going to be protecting a lead, not trying to go run up the score. So I love the plus a half here on PSG. Get it on the 22 to one. I think I will. I think I will. I still don't trust them though. Like even if they win this match, like if they play Benfica, like I'm hitting Benfica in, in the next round. If they play uh, Chelsea, I'm hitting Chelsea in the next round. If they play, who else could they play? I mean, um, who else is going to be in this? Real Madrid. Mm, probably wouldn't bet Real Madrid. But if uh, they play, yeah, well, buddy, after today, I don't know about that. After Real Madrid drew Betis, no, no, no. After Liverpool just put up a touchdown against United, the best team in the world, Anthony. Oh yeah, well, if Liverpool comes back to uh, win that tie, maybe Liverpool, maybe, <laughs> but I wouldn't bet PSG against Liverpool. So like, there's not a lot of teams where I'm feeling good about PSG. Um, obviously, the market is the reason I would bet against them, but uh, this PSG team, I just like this matchup a lot more so than I like them long term. But I mean, of course, they have three of the five best players in the world, arguably. So like, they're live in any competition to win anything at any time. Right, and and they're twenty two to one right now. So yeah, that's, that's the, that's the point. And uh, BJ, this is your team. You love, you yeah. love these guys. Oh, I love these guys. Um, yeah, this is really hard for me. Um, so I do project Byron at minus minus one sixty. Um, I'm not playing Byron. There's no chance I'm playing him uh, at this high of a number. I mean, I think Anthony hit the nail on the head is that in the first half, Byron just completely controlled the entire match. They kept PSG in their own end. they, didn't create a bunch of chances, but their press was incredibly effective. I mean, they had a pass per defensive action for the match at 7.4, and I'm pretty sure all six of their high turnovers came in that first half. And then Mbappe came on the pitch, and Bayern was in trouble. And I think it's very interesting uh, what Galtier is going to do. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he plays a 4-4-2 and just puts Messi and Mbappe up top uh, instead of the usual 4-3-3. Uh, but yeah, I mean... Who's going to play right back? I mean, Bayern to Bayern on Saturday against Stuttgart played Joseph Stanisic, um, who's you know a, a young defender, but like Anthony mentioned, he's not Cancelo. And even if they do play Cancelo, he's not a good defender. So how is he supposed to handle Mbappe or Neymar? So you have those question marks. But again, the problem that exists with PSG over and over and over again is that since Mbappe and Messi don't do a lot of defensive work, if Bayern, everything that we know about Bayern is true from what we see in the Champions League, they are not just going to hand PSG the ball, sit in two low blocks and say, hey, come and break us down. They're going to be on the front foot. They're going to be going for the kill shot. So that's what worries me if I bet PSG that Bayern is, is not going, they're going to try and score. They're going to go for it. And yeah, that does leave them a little bit exposed. But again, when you're defending with eight guys against one of the best attacking teams in the world, it's very, very tough. Plus, Marquinhos is going to be out for PSG. So that's another blow for them. So you're relying on Donnarumma, who has been playing better. But, you know, coming into the first leg, he was on a really bad uh, form of shot stopping. Uh, and, you know, the goal that they scored, he probably should have saved. Um, but, yeah, no, I am. I think this is, you know, I, how I feel is I've, you know, I faded PSG in, in the first leg pretty heavily. I won. So, I'm, you know, I'm feeling like, all right, I got my win. And I didn't feel very comfortable about it. So, I think this is a a pretty easy pass uh, for me. Yeah, I do think it's interesting. Like the the second half, though, and and so Stanisic plays, and they asked Nagelsmann about why, and he's like, you know, he gives us better defense, you know, and and we're less vulnerable. But like, I'm more worried about the other side. And of course, Mbappe's Mbappe, but like, again, it's the daily blend problem. Uh, and you know, Davies is good at kind of getting up and down, but there's no great answer. And I thought, I thought, you know, Gladbach did a really good job of kind of exposing that, that flaw. And you can just see exactly how this plays out. And I think this is kind of similar. Mbappe has, has crushed Bayern in the past, but I think this is kind of similar to, um, you know, what ultimately did happen in the first leg in 2020, where it was Bayern had a lot of possession was creating a bunch of chances, 
remember that was the Bayern that had Lewandowski that had this, the focal point to center the attack around. Uh, I don't think this Bayern team is, is as good as that team. And I think they're just as vulnerable defensively. Uh, so I think PSG, I think Mbappe is going to get one in transition. I think it, it, the easiest way to beat a press is when you have one of the best players in the world at the top of it, who's extremely fast and good at dribbling. And once he gets the ball, I mean, everything breaks. Uh, and then they have the greatest creator of all time next to him. So like, uh, I like my chances at, at this being a coin flip game at the worst. If anything, I, I think like I PSG is definitely a value on the money line too, of course. And if you think this way, I don't know why you wouldn't get in on the future because because I know well, I'm just going to be fading. I'm going to be like they're going to draw Benfica, and then I'm going to be like, well, you know, Benfica is really well set up to. And they were better than them in both. But how, that, they ben, were. What, what says they're going to? Why would they have to draw Benfica? I mean, it's Real Madrid will beat them. Nah, Real Napoli Madrid will beat them. Paper, t- paper Tiger. Leipzig will dismantle. right, but but these teams like <laughs> they can only draw one of them. And so Chelsea's the best. Let's team say they world. let's say they do draw Benfica, they'll be favored, and that means that you know, City, Napoli, Madrid, uh, the the two Milan clubs, like they're gonna have to play other teams, and they'll all be elim- like they'll have to face what but yeah. the, those three of those teams. BJ in, will never bet on PSG. You can. I'm, I'm never had, gonna do it. Ever. I had it's, the ticket. I had like ten to one last year before they signed Messi. And then they signed him and it went off at like three to one. And then they lost in the first round of the knockouts. And I was just like, mm-hmm. I'm never betting this team again in the Champions League. So, the, it, but I, I mean, bet you if the same problem over and over for them is like, yeah, they look great. Neymar's but... out, which I think is okay in this matchup. Yeah, no, I, I think they're like, okay without the Neymar same here. problem that existed for years. And nobody, no manager that's came in has been able to solve it. It's that Messi and Mbappe don't do defensive work. They sit in two low blocks they're not used to doing, and they're just not effective in doing that. We've seen it time and time again. Yeah, Bayern didn't create a ton of chances in the first leg, but when they have to play these style of teams, they don't have a style of play that can really dominate them. They're stuck on the foot on the back on their on their back foot, and then they have to rely. I mean, it's the same problem for France. But, yeah, but here's France the thing France though won a World Cup and they've gone to this final. And yeah, right. that's Killian the Mbappe. thing. That's, that's the, the thing. only thing. It's like because they have Kylian Mbappe, <laughs> they're really good. But other than that, every other area on the pitch, they get dominated. But the 40 minutes where he was on the pitch, they weren't getting dominated. They were doing the dominating. Like they had like four great chances. Bayern was def- like barely hanging on. I don't remember Bayern having like a clear I know, chance. I was, and I was rooting against the goal. I, I was. I, I was, was rooting like, on. I, I had the under, and I was like, "This is in trouble." Once need, that second goal, I was like, "I, I just need like, Bayern to get out of here with the one nil because I want the number on PSG." Uh, yeah, and man, it's, God, fun. it's gonna be fun to be rooting for them, and and you guys are gonna be missing out. And and when they do draw Benfica, and it's like City versus Madrid, and or City Napoli in the quarter in another quarterfinal, and City, Madrid City versus, ain't going through, buddy. Versus Chelsea, <laughs> sorry, Leipzig. Um, yeah, there you go. I, I'm telling you, I think. <laughs> Look, it, the, the hardest the hardest part of this is is obviously up, upsetting Bayern uh, and getting through this round. But if you if you have you have the opportunity to get twenty two to one on PSG right now, just down one nil. It's not two nil. It's one. Get in on it. 